Hi, everyone. My name is Ernesto Hernandez, and I am a remote librarian for the Xavier University Library. Um, Dr. Todd has asked me to provide a library session to help you guys with a research activity you guys will be doing in class. Uh, my understanding is that you are going to select a neighborhood from the city of New Orleans and document um, some research and report about that neighborhood and in particular a recent challenge faced by the residents of that neighborhood. Um, I am a remote librarian so I am not super familiar with uh, the state of Louisiana or New Orleans for that matter. Um, I apologize, but um, I've been a remote librarian for two years. I have visited um, New Orleans, but I will say mostly as a tourist and being a tourist hitting the hotspots. So this was kind of a, a good request for me to become more familiar um, with the city, um, the surrounding neighborhoods. And so I'm looking forward to kind of showing you guys how to get started with some research. So we'll be looking at library resources as well as online resources that will help you um, with this assignment. Now, because this is recorded, um, please keep in mind that I'm going to show you how to get in touch with not only me, but my colleagues and any additional resource resources or assistance you might need to help you with your research. I also understand that it sometimes can be difficult to watch an online recorded uh, research orientation. They kind of become dry and dull. So I will try and make this as brief as possible. However, some of this is very detailed. Um, so please bear with me, but I'll try not to drone on and on. And with that being said, I'm going to turn off my camera so I'm not just a talking head on your screen. And my suggestion is if you are watching this, hopefully from your own personal laptop, you can kind of follow along and maybe get started with some of your research as I'm demoing and showing you the resources that may help you um, with this assignment. So bear with me while I turn off my screen or my video feed. So again, so I'm not just a talking head and we're going to start on the uh, library's homepage. Okay, so hopefully you're at least a little bit familiar with how to get to the library's homepage. If not, it's there at the top. You can see the URL right there. And that's where we're gonna start because I want to share with you just some quick housekeeping type of items, um, how to contact us and some pertinent information regarding the library. Because again, a lot of this is gonna be very detailed. And I strongly suggest that you use the resources, the people that are available to you from the library to help you with your research. That's what we're here for is to help you with your research. So I'm gonna start here on the left-hand side and just scroll down a little bit. There is this area, um, that's labeled contact us. And you have several different options here to contact us. You can email us, you can call us, you can even text us. Um, the two that I really suggest, and especially as you continue at Xavier and get into your upper division classes, is to maybe meet with a librarian because again, we are here to help you with your research needs. We won't do the research for you, but we're here to help you with your research. And we're pretty familiar with a lot of the resources that we have. That way, whatever assignment you have, we can suggest a database, a book, newspaper, whatever it might be that will help you with that assignment. The other super helpful tool is this chat feature. So I, if I click on the chat, you'll just put your name and your question right here. And a librarian, um, either from Xavier or um, at a different institution will log on and take that chat question and assist you from there. And I say from another university because we're kind of in a consortium where we will help other universities with their research questions and those other universities also help us when we're not available online. So that chat feature is available 24 hours a day. You can get to that chat feature again on the homepage right here or I'm gonna navigate over here to the right-hand side of the screen and there's this little tab that's sticking out. My mouse is hovering over it. Got a question? If you click on that, it'll open up this window and you can just fill that out and start chatting um, with a librarian there. 
So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Again, as a remote librarian, um, I've been with Xavier for about two years, and unfortunately, I have not stepped foot on campus yet. So I have not visited the library, but I encourage you guys to check out our space um, and what we have to offer. And with that being said, scrolling back up here to the top and then just hovering over this spaces section, I want you guys to be aware of several different areas within the library that you are able to use, mostly this study rooms area. When I click on the study room area, you'll get some information on how to reserve a study room. Um, and this is super helpful, especially if you are doing group work or you just need a quiet place to study. Um, I highly suggest that you check out these study rooms um, to find a place to, to study or work on your group project there. Now, just keep in mind, um, they are first come first serve, but if you have that reservation, that's your best bet because if you go into that room um, and then the person that has a reservation comes in, you will be asked to leave. So just make a, a reservation, whether it's for a group reservation or individual reservation, um, and you'll have a dedicated space to study within the library. We also have an innovation studio right here. So this includes like 3D printing, um, um, some scanners on there. Um, and then you'll also notice that, uh, I mean, in, in addition to crafts and IT and electronics that you can do there, going back to the spaces, we have this data visual, visualization lab. And for some reason, that link is not working. So my apologies. Um, but you can find out more about our spaces here on this link from the library's homepage. So I'm just going to navigate back to our homepage, and this is what you'll see. Now, when we're starting research here, obviously, we want to use credible, reliable sources, right? Not just anything we find if we were to Google and the first results that we get from Google. It's important that we recognize where we're getting this information, who is producing this information, and to, to analyze this information for credibility and reliability. Again, part of your assignment is to select one of the neighborhoods from the city of New Orleans and, and write um, a research and documented report about that neighborhood. So when we're beginning our research, my suggestion is to take a look at this area on the home page, left-hand side, I'm hovering over that research tab. You have several different areas there to begin your research. You can start using databases, if you have a particular journal title in mind, or if you just want to browse journals, you can. There's also books and media, and then there's this research guide right here. I skipped over research help because that is essentially emailing a librarian or using the chat feature. But the research guides are a little bit more specific in that um, those are related to classes or specific courses that are taught at Xavier University. And we'll take a look at each of one of those each one of those in just a moment. But I wanna show you on the home page. you also have this search box here on the home page where start your research here. Um, this library search tool will search everything that the library has online and physically in-house in the library. So that includes your eBooks, your journal articles, your journals, dictionaries, encyclopedias, newspapers, you name it, whatever the library has, it should show up in here. That does not mean that you'll have access online to everything, but it shows you some of the sources that you have access to online, as well as some of the sources that are available physically in-house in the library. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment too, but I wanna get started with just saying, uh, I'm, I'm gonna do my own demo of a particular neighborhood of the city of New Orleans, and we're gonna start by going straight to Google. Now, I know there's some hesitation from faculty when students specifically and solely only research Google. But as a librarian and information professional, I think if you have the skills, the information literacy, literacy skills to identify credible, reliable information, Google is a great tool to use. And we'll talk about that as I'm doing some of these sample searches. So, I'm probably going to pick the most familiar, at least from someone who's not from New Orleans, um, probably the most recognizable neighborhood. I'm going to do the French Quarter. 
Now, in this search box, I'm going to start with uh, quotation marks as I'm doing this search. And if you're not familiar with why I'm using quotation marks, this is a helpful informational literacy tip for you. Do this whenever you're using any search box, whether it's a library search box tool or you're coming to Google. You'll put quotation marks around two or more keywords that you are trying to search. And the reason you'll want to do that is because it will search for everything that is related to those two keywords and nothing else. Otherwise, if I leave this open specifically in a library database search box, if I just put French Quarter with no quotation marks, that tool will search for every major keyword with the word French and every major keyword with the word quarter and not necessarily together. I'm looking for results specifically on the French quarter, not results for just French and not results for quarter. So helpful tip when doing that, because that will really focus and limit your results specifically to what it is that you're looking for. All right. So I'm just going to do this super broad. We've picked a neighborhood in New Orleans. I'm picking on or I'm typing in French Quarter and I have some information here. Right. One thing that you want to do, and I think this is a great starting point because we're just starting out our research. Google is a great starting point to look for. But one thing I want you to keep in mind are the domains of the results that are coming up. And what I mean by that is it's the ending of that URL. So this first result right here is neworleans.com, right? Here's another .com. .com is that domain. We want to be aware of the domains for whatever website we are looking at when we are using their information. Here's Wikipedia, it's a .org, meaning it's, dot, it's an organization, right? .com is a commercial site. Now, the other hesitation that I know some faculty have is, is students when they are using Wikipedia for their research. I, in particular, don't have any hesitation with that. I think Wikipedia is a great source. However, you need to find out where that information is coming from, and Wikipedia shows you that information with in-text citations. So let's take a look at this Wikipedia URL right here on the French Quarter, right? We've selected this neighborhood. This is a great introduction to the French Quarter. We have some history here on the right-hand side, kind of like at a glance. Obviously, it's saying what country, the state, the city. We have the size of that neighborhood and the population here as of 2010. Scrolling down again, you have your history. But as I was mentioning, in Wikipedia, you have these in-text citations. That's what you see by these numbers here that are listed at the end. Those are citations. Those are entries that have been put in either by bots, because there are bots that add to Wikipedia, or other researchers, students, whoever it might be adding to Wikipedia, right? This is an open online encyclopedia. Anyone can add anything to Wikipedia. So that's why you have to kind of be on your game when you are using Wikipedia and reading about certain entries that are there and see where that citation is coming from. So I'll show you how we can match these up. You may be familiar with what a citation is, these in-text citations, and looking at the end of the paper. Um, but that's where you'll want to be aware of what you're reading here and who is citing this information to, I guess, to mainly see if it's if it's accurate. So I'm going to scroll down again, some background information right about French quarters. This is all going to be super helpful as we're putting together our, our report. At the very end, for anything that maybe we want to reference or cite within our own research paper, we'll want to look to see where that's coming from. So all of those numbers that you saw for those in-text citations are listed here. And you can see where these citations are coming from. If anything looks kind of funny, or it may be a bogus site, or some kind of site that doesn't necessarily maybe match up with, let's just say common sense, or with your personal knowledge of New Orleans, you may want to look at that a little bit closer and see what else you can find. And to be honest, 
Wikipedia should not be your only source of information for your report. However, this is a great starting point for your research, right? All right, so we have the French Quarter here. We have some great information. I think this is a great starting point to get some background information about the neighborhood that you are going to research. And you also have to look at maybe recent challenges faced by the residents of that neighborhood. So as you're reading through this, I would take a look at maybe some of the contents on here and see if there's anything that kind of sticks out. Maybe we need to take a look at um, the effects of Hurricane Katrina and on, and on the residents there or post Katrina and what's happening since that hurricane um, or subsequent hurricanes from there. Maybe we are going to look at um, disaster preparedness, things like that, emergency preparedness in this neighborhood. Um, again, because this is a well-recognized neighborhood within New Orleans, maybe we want to look at tourism, for example, right? So we have Bourbon Street, restaurants and hotels. Maybe we want to take a deeper look into that. Whatever it might be, I would look at major keywords within this entry of the French Quarter and take a look at the contents here to get some ideas of, of possible topics um, to address a, a recent challenge, which is required within the report that you're doing. Now, with that being said, I'm going to transition away from Wikipedia. And I'm going to show you another online source. And typically, I wouldn't just give away sources. I kind of like to lead students to find these sources for themselves. But as I was doing this, I came across a very um, insightful website. And it is called the data, the data center research.org. So I am going to type this in. My apologies. Let me enter that. Now, this one is great. As someone who is not familiar with um, Louisiana history and a lot of the um, historical aspects of, of the state, and in particular New Orleans, I found this particular site super helpful when getting some more recent information and background information about certain neighborhoods. So what I liked about this site is when I was um, searching this particular website, I noticed that there are reports here. So you you can see there's a lot of reports related to the economy and workforce, population and demographics, right? You need some demographic information related to your neighborhood. Um, there's data resources on here, which is great. We talked about Hurricane Katrina, Katrina-related data, pre-Katrina data on here that may be helpful. You have some maps. And then, you know, as I mentioned, it's important to, to recognize where you're getting this information from. So above all, who is the Data Research Center? And I can just tell you without taking a lot of time going into that, is a credible, reliable source here. Um, they have some information about who they are. So if you were to click on this, you can kind of see um, who this organization is. But let's get into looking at uh, some information related to the French Quarter. So I am typing French Quarter. In the upper right-hand corner, you can see there's a search box right here. And there's a lot of results, but I did this for a few different neighborhoods, and we'll take a few take a look at a few different neighborhoods in this particular um, website. But the one you're looking for is the one that just says French Quarter, right? That's what we typed in. We just want information on the French Quarter. So I'm clicking on that. And this, this was last updated August 24th, 2022, not that long ago. So super current. And I really like this as opposed to Wikipedia. And again, I think Wikipedia is a great source, but I have the tab still open. And I'm going to scroll right here and show you this information um, at least for the population, is coming from 2010, right? This, this website was last updated August 24th, 2022, and we have some population numbers here. Pretty close, pretty much the same thing, but I think this is a little bit more current. 
So when we're looking for demographic information, my suggestion is to check out this particular website, thedatacenterresearch.org, and type in your particular neighborhood in here and see what information you can find. Um, without making you dizzy and scrolling around a lot, I'm just going to point out these different areas on here. So again, Picking out a particular topic or, or recent challenge faced by residents of that particular neighborhood might be listed right here, right? Maybe you're interested in housing and housing costs related to your neighborhood or income and poverty. So maybe homelessness. Um, maybe you're looking at transportation, education. Think about all of these different topics that you might want to consider as you're doing your report. I'm just going to click on this house or the, the housing and housing costs on here um, just to kind of give you an idea of some of the data that they they share on here. So occupied housing, vacant housing, and this tells you where this data is coming from on here. So, right, if you want to use some of this, you need to cite your information. I'm not going to go in depth on plagiarism. You may have heard about plagiarism. I hope you're familiar as a college student with what plagiarism is. No one wants to be accused of plagiarism, essentially using someone else's work without giving them credit and passing it off as your own, right? It's kind of a, a, a big academic no-no. You can get in some serious trouble with that. So again, remember, cite your sources, not only this website, but if you're using some of this data, this data is coming from this citation source right here. I'm going to scroll a little bit further down. Maybe we're interested in employment um, in this neighborhood. So workers living in this neighborhood, it gives some background information. Um, wages, for example, and then the industry sector that some of the residents in this neighborhood, um, where they may be employed on here. So super insightful. Um, I'm going to show you one more example of another neighborhood, and I believe one of those neighborhoods is the Garden District. So I have it already listed on there. So maybe you chose the Garden District, right? Again, this is the entry you should be looking for, the one that's specific to your neighborhood. However, in the search results, again, I'd take a look at some of these other entries just to see if they have some additional information you might be interested in. We'll take a look at some of those in just a minute, but I'm going to click on the one that is specifically for the Garden District. And again, this was last updated August 24th, 2022. You have that same left-hand side, income and poverty, housing and housing costs, educational attain attainment, employment, all of this helpful demographic data here that you should be using for your report. Going back to these results, I'm going to click on this one, Spotlight on the Garden District, a neighborhood with a lot of history. So if we want to get some more background information about this particular neighborhood, I most likely will click on this. Now, this is coming from an article in, I believe, an online magazine. They might have a physical presence. Or presence. I'm not familiar with this title. But the title is In Gambit from May 11, 2021. Not super old, so there's still some currency there, meaning it's pretty up to date. Clicking on this is going to redirect me to this website, which is nola.com. Again, the, the publication is Gambit. And Spotlight on the Garden District, a neighborhood with a lot of history. Now, when you're doing these reports, you need to recognize, again, the type of source that you're using. This is a dot-com website, most likely a online magazine publication. They may have a physical publication. They may have a physical magazine. I'd have to maybe Google and, and search that. However, the difference between this commercial site and maybe a more academic site, like the, the, re the data uh, research center that we were just at, are these ads here that you'll see on the right hand side, right? That doesn't mean that this information within this web page is not helpful. It just means that this is kind of for the casual everyday reader. 
but it has some helpful background information. So as you're compiling your sources, I would say a good mix of maybe some .com sites, some .edu, some .gov sites, some .organization sites would be best to add in your research paper. I wouldn't solely rely on magazines or .com websites, right? But a good mix of where you're getting your information will round out your paper very well. So again, neighborhood history, profiles and preservation of this neighborhood, um, looks like it's listing some restaurants or points of interest within that particular neighborhood. Again, this is coming from that data center, so you can browse some of these results that you are getting right here. You may also want to go to scholar.google.com. Now, this is going to slightly differ from your typical Google search. If you're not familiar with using Google Scholar, Google Scholar is bringing results that are available from other institutions, other universities, organizations, essentially from around the world related to whatever keywords or topic that you're putting into this search box. So again, with my quotation marks, I'm putting French Quarter. And let's say, and demographics, right? Now, before I do this search, I want you to keep in mind, again, quotation marks around French Quarter. So if you have two or more keywords that belong together, and the generic sample that I give is, let's say maybe you're doing a research paper on social media. Social media would be enclosed in quotation marks, right? You want those two keywords together. So that's why we're doing that with French Quarter. and we're connecting that with demographics. So we want results specifically for French Quarter and demographics. And let me see if I can make this just a little bit bigger. So we have about 3,470 results on here. And as I mentioned, these are going to be results from around the world. The majority of them are going to come from different institutions where you may not have access to these particular articles. However, um, some of them may be open access, meaning you may have access. They may be freely available to you. But this is where you can find some specific information that are that is more academic, more of what your professors are looking for when you're writing a research paper or report, right? So maybe our topic is related to, Tourism, gentrification of this particular neighborhood. Let's look at this one. I know it's not good practice to do the first result that's at the top. It really isn't. We should really be scrolling down. We'll take a look at more. But just as a sample topic, let's say we're looking at tourism and gentrification in the French Quarter. I'm going to click on this article. And it looks like it's recognizing that I'm here at my home institution, Weber State University. So I have access to this. Obviously, it's telling me up here. I'm not sure if Xavier has access to this, but if they do not, this should not stop you from trying to get access to this article. And I will show you how to do that when we get back to the library's homepage. But I just want to kind of go over this particular entry, right? And kind of break down what we're looking for regarding this journal article. So this is coming from the database, Sage journals. It's free access, so I would hope that as a Xavier student you have access to this. Published July 2nd, 2016. Here is our title, Tourism Gentrification, the case of New Orleans. I'm not even going to attempt to speak French because I do not, and related to the French Quarter. Our authors, Kevin Fox Gotham, Volume 42, Issue 7, and here is a URL. This is called a DOI. You'll see DOI in that URL, and DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. This is a URL that is specific to this journal article. So do not copy this URL here at the top. Essentially, it's the same as what's down here, but you should always look for the DOI to get back to that exact article. It's essentially an online address for this specific article. It's the digital object identifier. Underneath that, we have our abstract here. 
If you're not familiar with what an abstract is, an abstract is a quick introduction to what this article will be about. Usually it's no longer than a paragraph, as you can see here, and the first couple of sentences introduce you to the article. The middle of that paragraph usually tells you what they are researching, what they're studying, and by the end of that paragraph, the last few sentences kind of give you a little sneak peek of their results or what they found um, and the conclusions of that research. Not entirely, but it gives you just enough information to make a determination of whether or not this will be an article that you may want to use for your own research or report. So I wouldn't solely go off the abstract. You still need to read the article, but the abstract, again, is a quick introduction to whether or not to make a determination of whether or not you want to use this article in your own research. Some other things I want to point out, you can download this as a PDF. So if I just clicked on this, it would change this to a PDF format so I can print it or just save the PDF format. Um, you also can click on this site article feature, right? And so looking at the instructions for your assignment, you need to cite your sources in MLA format. Um, you have the citation here. To me, this looks like APA format. I am a little bit more familiar with APA than I am MLA. Um, but this is what you're looking for, this information that you need to cite, right? You have your authors here, the year of the publication, 2005. Tourism gentrification is the title of our article, French Quarter, and then the title of the journal is Urban Studies, volume 42, issue number seven, and it's pages 1099 through 1121. We also include our DOI, which is this URL right here, our digital object identifier in our citation. We just need to format this to MLA citation. And I will show you on the library's homepage how to find resources so that you can become familiar with MLA citation. But just keep in mind, you need to note that information if you are going to use this in your research or for any other source that you are going to use for your research or uh, report. Okay, so I actually exited out of Google Scholar, but I wanted to look again at some other results. So here we are, French Quarter and Demographics, right? Typically, we do not click on the first result, but that one just kind of caught my eye as a possible topic that you may want to research. Let's take a look at, um, let's see if something else sticks out to us. And as I mentioned, a lot of these are going to be journal articles. They're going to be reports from other universities or institutions. Some of them might have a citation to a book or an ebook. And again, you may not have access to all of these, unfortunately, but there is a way to request access um, to these. So here's another gentrification one related to this neighborhood. So let's say this title caught our eye, Gentrification and Gay Neighborhood Formation in New Orleans. Looks like it talks about um, the French Quarter in here. This is a book actually. So unless your institution has access to this book, you may not get it. So that's where Google Scholar is kind of hit or miss in your resources or in the resources that are listed here. And you may have to click on a few different pages or links to actually find um, some results that you have access to. I'm gonna stop actually, because I think now we can go back to the library's website and do some sample searching there. But just to recap real quick, the three online sources that I'd recommend you start out with include Wikipedia, so type in the neighborhood that you chose, see what you can find out about that. From that, use the information that you are finding within Wikipedia and see what you can find in the data center right here, this datacenterresearch.org. Type in the neighborhood that you have selected in the search box and see what information comes up uh, from there. Between Wikipedia and the data center, 
Again, look at major keywords or things that are being mentioned about that particular neighborhood and then add that to Google Scholar. Again, scholar.google.com. Our my sample search was French Quarter and demographics, but maybe I could put gentrification, right? Let's just try that. Dimensions of gentrification in a tourist city. We're looking at French Quarter here. Um, again, another gentrification in tourist cities. All of these kind of are related to my search, which is French Quarter and gentrification. Now we're going to go back to the library's website and do some sample searches here, but I want to navigate to this research area. And I had mentioned at the beginning of my recording that there are research guides specific to courses um, or disciplines that are taught at Xavier University. These research guides also are specific to certain resources provided by the library. So let's click on research guides. And I'm going to type in newspapers. Right? Newspapers are a great source of information and maybe some challenges faced by residents within a particular neighborhood. Um, you may see some repeated patterns or it may give you an idea of a possible topic for a challenge faced by residents of that neighborhood. So I'm typing in newspapers and obviously these are related to the history research guide, but if I just click on this first result for newspapers, it's gonna take me to this page. Now, these are links to databases for historical news. And some of this may be helpful related to your topic or the neighborhood that you're researching, but I'm gonna click on this link here on the left-hand side and click on current news. Now, a lot of these sites will give you access to newspapers around the United States as well as around the world. So access world news, and you can kind of see within the, the description um, what, what, it, what this particular newspaper or database covers. You also have times to or access to the New York Times, Wall Street Journal. But I'm scrolling down here to Louisiana News. And this is a Louisiana newsstand, provides a comprehensive selection of articles from the Baton Rouge Advocate and full copies of New Orleans Business, New Orleans City Business, New Orleans Magazine, and pre-1997 articles from the Times. So I'm not familiar with what the newspaper record is, maybe for New Orleans, or if there's a, a, a well-recognized state newspaper. I'm not familiar, but I do know that this database will kind of run the gamut in terms of different uh, publications, different news publications. So as a student, it should recognize that you have access. So um, you can see here at the top access provided by Xavier University of Louisiana. And we are searching 68 databases within this, but it's specifically related to those newspapers. So I am going to do a sample search here. We'll just do French Quarter. And I'm gonna keep this broad. Do not type in your research question here, thesis statement, or full sentences. That is not how these databases operate. And it's not like Google where anything you type in, you're going to get results. You have to be specific when you're using library databases. It's kind of annoying, but at the same time, it's super helpful. That way you're not inundated with useless information. So my, my keywords here are pretty broad, right? French Quarter. I'm not including that with anything else. But the reason I'm keeping it broad is because I want to see what results I'll get just from the French Quarter. And then I'm going to show you how to narrow those down and get a little bit more specific. Okay. So as I mentioned, this is pretty broad. I just put in French Quarter, and I have almost 50,000 results. I have 49,489 results. What I like to tell students when we're using library databases, work smarter, not harder. Let the database do the work for you. So when you're using academic library databases, the first things you should select include peer-reviewed, 
right? This means that we want newspaper entries or journal articles that have been reviewed by other experts and deemed credible. That's going to take out a lot of the nonsense or non-academic articles that we can typically find just by doing a Google search. A lot of those .com sites are not peer-reviewed. When we're using library databases, we specifically want articles, whether they're newspaper articles, reports, or journal articles that have been peer-reviewed. We can also select the source type. So are we looking for scholarly journals or trade journals? I'm not going to go in depth about the difference between the two, but the scholarly journals are typically what you're looking for. That means that those are journals that um, are edited, have publishers or entries by other scholars, other academics, other professors, other professionals that have credentials based on the topic um, of that particular um, keywords that you're searching or research question that you are searching, right? We want scholarly journals that have been peer reviewed. So I'm going to select scholarly journals. And you can see I went from almost 50,000 results down to 1,110 results. I'm slowly chipping away and getting a little bit more focused. Now, the other thing is we can um, select publication date. So sometimes this will be important depending on the type of research that you're doing. The example I like to use is, let's say maybe you're doing something healthcare related. Usually when it comes to healthcare, the latest and greatest research, right? The latest stuff that comes out is gonna be of the most important. That does not mean that historical research is not important, but we're looking for the latest advancements in, in maybe uh, healthcare, right? Um, and sometimes your professor will say, you can't have any articles that are older than 10 years or five years or look for articles within the past year. That's where this will come in handy. However, I'm not gonna mess with that right now. I'm not gonna look at anything. Um, I have just over a thousand results. Still a lot, but not overwhelming. What I'm going to do is move to this next area, subject. And this is really where I'm letting the database do the work for me. So again, you need to um, pick a topic or a recent challenge related to the neighborhood, right? Look at this subject on here. And I opened that when I clicked on more that opened this window here. What do I want to know about the French Quarter? Am I interested in hurricanes? maybe tourism, Mardi Gras, politics, whatever it might be, I can select that on here. The number that you see count right here will mean that means that there are that many entries, that many articles related to this particular subject that I'm including with the French Quarter. My advice, if you're just starting off and thinking about a topic or challenge that you need to do for this neighborhood, do not select more than three. We're really trying to focus and narrow this down, right? I am going to do tourism. I don't need to do exclude everything else. I should have 89 results by just selecting tourism. I'm gonna click apply. And there it is, 89 results. I'm looking at French Quarter in scholarly journals related to tourism. And these scholarly journals have been peer reviewed right? So I have 89 results here. This is more than manageable. So let's take a look at some of these articles. And a quick helpful tip when you're doing this is if you just hover over a lot of these articles without having to click on them, you can just click on this quick look. It opens this side window and you have your abstract there. Now, unfortunately, one thing I just noticed with this first result is we have results here that are also um, in a foreign language. If we want to get rid of that, we can go down here on the left-hand side and only select English. It looks like there's five Spanish, maybe one Polish article and some other languages, but let's just click on English so that way we are not getting foreign language results. And again, quick look, opens the side window. Here's my abstract. Quick introduction to what this article is about. That way I can make a determination of whether or not I want to click on this and see the whole article. So let's see if a title sticks out to me.
Let's say this one right here, the impacts of tourism stays on residents self-reported health, a pan-European analysis on the role of age and urbanization level. That is a long title. It's a mouthful, but let's say that stood out to me. I'm gonna take a quick look, read the abstract. It's talking about tourism, medical tourism. Unfortunately, it looks like it's not covering New Orleans on here or the French Quarter. I don't see anything related to that. So I'm going to skip this one. I'm not sure why it was listed, even though French Quarter's on there. I want to find one specifically related to the French Quarter. Okay, this is a scholarly journal. The Disney vacation of New Orleans, the French Quarter as a facade in a divided city. Let's take a quick look. All right, talking about New Orleans here. All right, let's say this is one we want to take a look at. So I'm going to click on this title. And what this result should do is take me, I'm crossing my fingers, to the full text of this article. And it looks like it does. So again, the important things you need to remember, the title up here, the author, Mark J. Souther. It's coming from the Journal of American History, volume 94, issue number three, December 2007, pages 804 through 811. It looks like we have the HTML version here of the full text. We can also look at the full text PDF if I click here on the left-hand side, right? That way I can print this or just email this to myself. If I want to email it to myself, in the upper right, there is an email feature. If you click on that, we'll make sure that we email ourselves the full text of this article. Um, it looks like it's only going to allow us with APA citations. So again, you're going to have to create that MLA citation. I'm going to show you how to do that. Put your Xavier email address in here, your name, and maybe a message just to remind you of why you're emailing this to yourself. There is also a site feature aside from emailing it to yourself. So if you're just doing this while writing your paper and you want to cite this, this comes in handy. However, I do want you to be aware these are not always 100% correct. So you still need to be familiar with the rules of MLA. We can just scroll down to um, MLA. Looks like MLA 9th is the latest. It's going to generate that citation for you. Copy and paste this into your paper. But again, make sure that your indentation, your spacing, capitalization, italicized words, whatever it might be, are correct. You need to become familiar with what an MLA citation looks like. But this is a quick and easy way to add that citation and then make those corrections on there. Okay, I am going back to my results list. We kind of went through on how to make this database work for you, right? Use the left-hand side limiters to really narrow down. We started off super broad with French Quarter, almost 50,000 results. We ended up with 83 results. Not all 83 are particularly relevant, but we did find at least one that may work for us. And that's what it's going to take as you're narrowing this down. 83 results. It's a lot better than 50,000 results. So let the database do the work for you. That was just one database. So I'm going to go back actually to the home page of the Xavier Library. And remember, how we got there is we went to research here on the left hand side, I went to research guides, I typed in newspapers, clicked search. And then I clicked on newspapers on the first result. From there, current news, scroll down to the bottom to Louisiana news, and it took me to that particular database. However, you can check out any of these other databases, these other news databases, if you'd like. What I'm going to show you now, I'm going back to the home page, is this search engine that's on the home page. And aside from maybe Wikipedia, just getting some background information, 
this search box right here is pretty much the Google search box for everything that the library has. It'll search for books, videos, articles, newspapers, whatever it is in-house, in the library, physically in the library, as well as online. So let's do our broad search again. French Quarter. I'm just going to leave it as that. Again, I'm putting these in quotation marks because I do not want to, the database to search for those words separately. So get in the habit with any two keywords that belong together and close them in quotation marks. It will make your searching much easier and more specific. Okay. So this is not a database. This is a discovery tool, a library research tool. It is searching hundreds of databases, hundreds of books and eBooks, journal articles, right? With that being said, it's kind of small, but I'm highlighting it near the top. There are 2,489 results just by searching this. So use this search tool um, and let it do the work for you. We need to select peer reviewed journals. And then from there, we can also look at subject. So this is where I'm going to click on show more. I'm here on the left hand side. This is where I can select a subject pretty much asking me, what is it that I want to know about the French Quarter? So this is, again, where you need to have some idea of what you want to know about your topic in here, keeping it broad. If we were to put Garden City up there, I'm not sure what results would show up, but you would also have this subject area right here. And let's just stay with the topic of maybe tourism, right? There's only going to be 11 results, so super limited on here. But it should take that down from 96 results since I selected um, peer-reviewed journals. It's only going to show 11 results on here. When I select that, I'm going to click Apply Filters. And here we are. And look, there's the article that we found in the other database. Here is a peer-reviewed article, Tourism Gentrification, the case of New Orleans French Quarter. So out of these 11 results, it looks like there are a couple results that may be pretty relevant. Unfortunately, I don't think we have a quick preview, so you may have to click on each one of these separately. I'm going to click on this one, that first result, and this is going to, let's see if I can find maybe an abstract on this. So I probably won't be able to find it unless I click on the database for it. So in order to find this, this article, I'll have to select one of these four databases. Any of these four, it looks like it has this particular article. I'm just going to click on this first one right here. This should redirect me to that journal article. And here we are, this article. Urban Studies is the journal. Here at the top, you can see volume 42, issue number seven from June 2005. And that's how we get to the article. Now, there's not a whole lot of tools on here, but I want to point out here on the right-hand side, if you click on this little like yellow square, this is a citation tool. You need to cite an MLA, right? So MLA 9th edition, there is my citation. Copy and paste this into my paper and then just make the necessary corrections once I'm familiar with MLA to make sure that everything looks correct. Now, as I've mentioned, there's also a note up here. Pay special attention to personal names, capitalization, and dates. So again, it's on you to make sure that you're familiar with the citation tools. If you want to just email this to yourself, so let's say you're compiling some articles that you're going to put together and you're not quite ready to maybe write about this article in your paper, Email it to yourself, put your Xavier email address in there, select your citation format, right? So we're using MLA, and it will send you a link directly to this article with the MLA citation, which is pretty handy. That's what I would suggest that you do. If you just need the citation, 
again, that yellow square. Or if you just want to link to the article, do not use the URL here at the top. Use this little chain for the permalink. Copy and paste that. That will be the permalink to get you directly back to this article. So those are some of the results when using this library search tool. This is not a database. This is a discovery tool searching lots of journal art journals that bring back specific articles from those journals in these results, as well as ebooks, um, whatever it might be that the library has related to the keywords that you are using. Um, again, use that left hand side to really focus and narrow down your results. I'm going to go back to the library's homepage. We've covered several different things. Again, the three websites, Google Scholar, Wikipedia, and the data center. We looked at the research guide, the newspapers, how to get to those newspapers. And we looked at this discovery tool right here. The last thing I'm going to show you related to like databases and finding information is this section for databases. So under research, it is the first result databases right there. You can kind of narrow this down by looking at subjects because there are 231 databases and not all, all of these will be relevant to what it is that you are looking for. However, you can narrow that down by subjects right here. It's not gonna be specific to New Orleans. You'll notice there isn't anything on here. So you may kind of have to narrow that down. Are you looking for history, maybe of your particular area, um, geography? Or if you're just looking for a broad database, right here, this is always gonna be the second database listed. It's a popular one. Academic Search Complete is a great starting database. And I'm just gonna show you We'll click Academic Search Ultimate, continue. Let's just do French Quarter. It looks, says French Quarter, New Orleans. Sometimes if you see a pre-populated suggestion underneath the search box, you may want to pay attention to that and click on that. I'm going to click on that French Quarter, New Orleans. 159 results, right? It's still pretty broad, though, because we haven't mentioned anything that we're particularly interested in researching related to these keywords. Again. That's where the left-hand side will come in handy. Peer reviewed, what we should select very first. We're now down to 16 results on here. We can look through these 16 results without doing anything else. If we want to broaden this back up just to see what we have, I'm going to remove the peer review on there and go down to this subject. Again, this is where you should kind of think about, well, what is it that I want to know about the French Quarter in New Orleans? It looks like there's a lot of popular names on here, maybe a lot of performing artists or actors, actresses um, that we can select. That's not necessarily what we're looking for in terms of um, a problem or a challenge faced by this, but because there's only 159 results, you may just want to browse all 159. It is a little bit overwhelming and not all of them obviously will be relevant to what it is you're looking for, but you can do that in a quick way without having to click on each individual record, hover over the magnifying glass, brings up this bubble. I have my bibliographic information. Again, that is this title, the authors, the journal it's coming from, the date, and my abstract right there. We've looked at this one in a different database, but just to give you a heads up, PDF is here on the left-hand side. Your, your tools are here on the right-hand side. So if you want to cite, if you want to email it to yourself, you can do that, or you can use the permalink on here to get access to that article. So I know that's a ton of information. Um, the last thing I told you, I said I would mention is the citation help. I'm going to go back to this research guides. And if you just type in citation here in the search box, citing sources, the very first tool on here. If you click on that, on the left hand side, you can click on MLA. Again, this is eighth edition. It doesn't look like, unfortunately, we have the ninth. I apologize. And again, I'm not super familiar with the changes from the 8th to the 9th, 
but this is still helpful in terms of making sure you are citing in MLA style, right? And it's broken down by how to uh, cite in MLA style for a book, for a journal, an electronic source. So whether that's a website, an online newspaper, we looked at newspapers. It also covers how to do an MLA in-text citation on here. So keep that in mind um, when it comes to citing your sources. Other than that, um, turning my video back on, I know I said I would try and keep that short and sweet. It's very detailed. It is a lot of information to go through. So remember, you have several different options to get in touch if you need additional assistance for your research. And you can always reach out to me. Um, I'm going to see, I believe it's this get help. If you click on this area, um, you can meet with a librarian on here. You'll just schedule, make an appointment, and you can request to meet with me as you continue to fill this out. Otherwise, any of us would be more than happy to help you. And the most convenient, I think, is this chat feature. Um, so don't forget to do that. Good luck, you guys. And don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I appreciate it. Talk to you soon.